The most fundamental tip is collect what you love and you'll never go wrong. And from there, we'll get more sophisticated. Some of these tips I don't think have ever been discussed on YouTube before. Many collectors focus on keys. These are first appearances of major characters or first issues in an important series. Sometimes you'll have a book that does both. It's the number one issue and it's the first appearance of a major character, but that's not always the case. Historically, these books have done best from an investment perspective. That being the case, not all keys are first appearances or first issues. There's also incredible demand for great art on covers. And these span a number of genres from superhero to horror, to sci-fi, to good girl art, to funny characters, and many more. Become familiar with some of the best artists like Jack Kirby, Alex Schomburg, L.B. Cole, Jim Steranko, Frank Frazetta, Matt Baker, and Carl Barks. Know how to price a comic book. Comic value is dependent on three factors, notability, rarity, and condition. You can go deep down the rabbit hole on each one of these topics, which is beyond the scope of this video, but in the description box, I provide a lot more details of different resources on all three. Even monster keys can go down in value. Now, you'll see some videos and you might read some articles talking about books that are guaranteed to go up in the long run. Whenever I hear that word guaranteed, I get really nervous and I think you should too. If the past two years has taught us anything, this big comic book bubble, it's that when it popped, so did the value of many books, including most Silver Age keys. Now, it may go up again, but if you're paying way too much for a book on the front end, way above fair market value, you have to also counteract that overspending. Relatedly, FOMO or the fear of missing out is talked about a lot in the comic book community. If it ever was a good idea to chase FOMO, it may have been back in 2020 as the bubble was getting bigger and bigger and bigger. But now, since the market has cooled off quite a bit, FOMO is just not a good idea. If somebody's trying to convince you that you need to buy this book now, or this book is gonna be hard to get, nine times out of 10, it's just not the case. The book is probably pretty easy to find, and it likely is not going to shoot up in value anytime soon. So be patient and do your research before you buy a book. And by the way, did you even like that book in the first place, or did you listen to somebody who convinced you to like it? Speaking of which, when somebody is hyping a book, always ask this question. Is there a conflict of interest? Sometimes it's just a book that the person loves and they want to talk about it. Other times, unbeknownst to you, the person is trying to sell a copy of that book or maybe dozens of copies of books, or perhaps they hoarded a hundred copies of this book. They're trying to inflate a comic book's value for their personal gain. It's a classic pump and dump scheme. I'll tell you what needs pumping, it's this channel. Can you help this video get 200 likes? Sometimes restored books can be a good option. Over the past couple decades, some people have demonized these books. Color touch, tear seals, pieces added, uh, interior pages lightened. No, I'm not gonna touch it, it's disgusting. Well, let me tell you what, sometimes some books are really expensive and they're hard to obtain, but these cheaper copies, these restored copies, sometimes you can get them at a price that you can finally access. You may be able to get that grail that you never thought you would be able to get. The key here is buying that purple label book, the restored book, at a good price. I'm not gonna go into the details here, but again, in the description box, I have information about how to price a restored book. Build relationships with dealers and collectors you can trust. Many are great, they work hard, they connect sellers and buyers together, and they deserve to make a living off of comic books. The best seek to build a solid, trusting relationship with you, and they're in it for the long run. But there are many folks who are trying to make a quick buck and they'll use any kind of scheme to take advantage of you. I was once at a comic book convention and I had a nice Silver Age grail. I was talking to this gentleman who was really nice and he said, I've always wanted to have that book in my personal collection. If I were to get it, I would cherish it always. So I listened to the story and I believed him and I gave him a great deal on this book. Then through the grapevine, I heard he flipped that book in less than one hour later. Okay, dude, you made 200 or $300 off that book. What you did to me wasn't illegal, but it certainly wasn't ethical. And now I will never deal with you again. Buy mystery boxes for fun, not as an investment. Some dealers set up mystery boxes, sometimes a hundred of them. And in one of the hundred, they'll put in a really nice book, like a Hulk 181, which is the first appearance of Wolverine. Then people buy those mystery boxes, open it up, and they hope that they hit that gold mine. Did I get that Hulk 181? 
it's certainly fun, good entertainment, and you also might get books that you would have never looked at if you didn't buy a mystery box. As an investment, I can't recommend it. It's like buying a lottery ticket. You might get lucky, but over the long run, on average, it's a losing investment proposition. Behind the scenes, what these mystery boxes are are mostly inventory that the dealer couldn't move. If something about a book bothers you, don't buy it. More often than not, that thing will continue bothering you and may even bother you more once you have it. It could be for a particular issue of a book or it could be a particular copy of an issue. Let me give you examples. Matt Baker is one of my favorite artists and I love the series Seven Seas. But Seven Seas number three, I can't stand that book. And it's because of the cover art. Look at her legs. Don't they look super weird? They do to me and they annoy me. So every time I look at that book, I just think, gosh, Matt Baker, you're an amazing artist, but you did a terrible job on those legs. So I won't buy that book because I don't like it. That annoys me. Here's another example. Exciting Comics number 66. I actually love this book, but I bought a copy that was an 8.0. Here it is right here. What's the first thing you notice? It's that dust shadow on that right hand side. And there may be some foxing in that dust shadow too. It doesn't look good. Now, if this book were a 3.0 or a 4, it might not bother me much, but as an 8.0, it's just too distracting. So I ended up selling it and I'm glad I did. A positive way to say all this is find what gives you joy in a comic book. Is there a particular character? Are there particular issues you really like? And go after them. And also think about the aesthetics that are right for you and follow that as well. The last tip, if you're thinking about spending $1,000 or more on a comic book, you'll need to think about how to price a book in today's rocky market. Do you go for quantity or quality and a bunch of other considerations? I spent three months making this video to help you out. Thanks so much for watching and hope to see you around real soon.